You are special, you are loved, you are blessed. With this in mind, let's tune in to the Word of God. Well, hello everybody and welcome to this special time in God's Word. I'm Dr. Sheldon D. Newton coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International located right here in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. We're so glad to have you with us. We want to welcome Jesus Christ Center Ministries International members and partners. Hey, you're helping to make it happen as we take his word to the world. We also want to welcome all of you listening here in New Providence and the family islands of the Bahamas, in America, in the Caribbean, in America, in Israel, in China, Africa, in India, over there in Pakistan, in Egypt, in Australia, in um, uh, um, wherever you're from, okay? We want to welcome you to our broadcast. Shall we pray together? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We ask you in Jesus' name, give to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may receive understanding of your word. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. We are discussing the entire book of 1 Corinthians, and if you remember, we are on chapter number 13. We have covered from chapters 1 straight down to chapter number 13. We encourage you, if you are, um, are interested and you've missed any of those, you can go right back on YouTube here, and you can uh, um, be able to... Um, get those other lessons that we've already taught on this wonderful book written by the Apostle Paul as inspired by the Holy Ghost. And by the way, listen, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you don't miss another teaching as we share God's Word. Now, we have been looking at the fact that the Apostle Paul was addressing various concerns that were going on in this local assembly. He is now dealing with the area of gifts of the Holy Spirit, manifestations of the Spirit of God, and of people operating in the various ministry gifts and in the various uh, um, spiritual gifts. And there was a lot of confusion going on in this local assembly. Uh, and people had received the mighty baptism with the Holy Ghost and with fire. They were operating, the gifts of the Spirit were flowing, but they were lacking divine order. And so the Apostle Paul is addressing these matters, and this is what he's dealing with from chapter 12, 13, and 14. He's dealing with um, the best way uh, um, to... Um, um, enjoy the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And so in chapter 12, if you remember the last verse of that chapter, he says there, um, to covet earnestly or desire earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way, a more excellent way to have these manifestations of the Holy Spirit flowing. And so now he goes in chapter 13 into the area of walking in love. Now, here is something to note, and you can um, write this down uh, um, and remember this. Um, he's talking now about love and saying that is the best way to have these manifestations of the Spirit flow. Uh, um, love is not a uh, gift of the Spirit, okay? Love is a fruit of the Spirit. So right in the middle of him talking about the gifts, he starts to address the area or the issue of character. Right in the middle of talking about manifestations of the Holy Ghost, he starts to talk to these believers about their character and developing the character of walking in love, developing the practice of walking in love towards their fellow believer. And he said that this was the best way to, to have these manifestations of the Holy Spirit flowing, that if we learn how to care for people and how to really have a compassion and a heart for people, and if we learn how to, to treat people like we want to be treated uh, and be kind to people, as he expresses here concerning how love behaves, he said then the manifestations of the Holy Spirit would flow better through us, and not only flow better through us, flow better through us to bring healing, to bring help, to bring hope, to bring comfort, to bring strength to those who we are ministering to. All right? And so and in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, he tells us how this love behaves. And let me just throw this in here. Gifts without fruit can prove disastrous. Gifts without fruit 
can prove disastrous. On the other hand, the fruit of the Spirit uh, 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 will cause a person to operate in the gifts of the Spirit more accurately and with more wisdom. When you walk in love and you treat people how they, uh, uh, how you want to be treated, and you aim to never uh, um, intentionally hurt a soul, uh, um, even when you say you're ministering, and you aim to choose to, to love them and speak to them out of the love of God, uh, um, you end up being able to know what you could make public and should make public and what you don't need to make public because you're not about trying to show people as to how deep and spiritual you are. You're into making sure help people and it's a matter of helping people with the enabling power of the Holy Spirit that God gives you all right so uh, um, there are times when um, um, I've operated in in manifestations of the Spirit that will never become public there are things that the Spirit of God has revealed to me about various people or about things. Um, and some of those things I've never uh, um, said and shared, you see. But if God sends me to an individual to help an individual, I help an individual. If God sends me uh, um, to minister to someone, I do it. I remember one time um, um, I was ministering. Uh, um, I was a minister of the gospel. Still, I'm a minister of the gospel, but I was um, not preaching at this particular service. I was just attending the service. And there was this young lady who was on the praise team at that local assembly you see but the minute I stepped into that local assembly I knew that she had fallen into sin I knew I just looked at her and I knew I knew that she had messed up uh, and uh, the minute I looked at her now the minute I looked at her and I I, I, I didn't go up in the in the church and I had a I have had a place of eldership in the church, you know, so I could have probably done it and maybe seemingly get by with it. But I did not go and immediately say, hold on, stop the service, stop the service. The Lord shows me one of you in sin and then look at her and say, you're the one, you know. <laughs> no, no, the Lord didn't show me that to hurt her. She had fell into sin. Uh, um, it was uh, um, something that she um, regretted and you could have seen the guilt. Uh, I guess that's what I saw in the spirit, you know, but um, she, 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 it was not like she was a promiscuous sinner, you see, or a person who meaning to sin and, you know, just um, living in a life of sin and thinking that they're hiding it. That was not this person. She was not a hypocrite. That's what I'm trying to say. So I didn't expose her and get in the front of people and say, hold up the Lord, show me this one, you, you right there, you say, no. What did I do? I waited until after church and I waited until um, I was able to talk to her alone. I was able to minister to her in the name of the Lord and talk to her concerning, uh, um, um, find out exactly what had happened, talk concerning making better life choices all right and so um, what I'm trying to show you is when it comes to manifestations of the Holy Spirit the Apostle Paul was trying to get over to this local assembly this is not about trying to show people how deep you are this is not about trying to show people how more spiritual than the other person you are this is not about you trying to show that you're the only one God uses you see he was trying to get it you need to walk in love you need to rem rem remember that the Holy Spirit manifests these manifestations not to show nobody about how deep or spiritual you are because the manifestations of the Holy Ghost can operate through a baby Christian that's yielded. The manifestations does not make a person spiritual. This is what the Apostle Paul was trying to really get across to them. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit simply mean that the Holy Spirit has chosen you to flow one of his manifestations through to help somebody else. All right, But that doesn't show where you are in God at all. At all. At all, he can use baby Christians to flow through. The fruit of the Spirit, how you treat people, how you live in your daily life is what determines where you are in your walk with the Lord. I pray that you got a hold of that because that is what a lot of people are missing. All right, uh, um, and this is why when the Apostle Paul in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, by the Spirit of God, gives the qualifications for being a bishop, for being a minister of God, he said that the qualifications had to do more with your character, with their character, than with what gifts operate through them. You read through those qualifications. He's not dealing there with, oh, they must have this particular gift. Oh, they must have that particular gift. Oh, they must walk in this 
anointing power that's above. No, he starts dealing with them, with their character. He starts dealing with the fact that they can't be a run around. They can't be a, 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 more, a, a more than one woman man. They have to be a husband of one wife. They can't be a, a person who runs around. But I mean, their God, that knocks out a whole lot of people right there from calling themselves by the title of bishop. Because if you're saying that you're bishop and you're running around with the women in the church or running around on your wife, you're not qualified. Not according to the Apostle Paul. Not according to the Word of God. Not according to God. You're not qualified. You see? He said that's one of the, one of the first things. He said the bishop must be blameless. He must be the husband of one wife. A one woman man, one translation says. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it goes on and talking about how he must be of good behavior and how he must be hospitable to people, treat people right, and so forth. Not a novice, not someone who just gets saved yesterday, um, and so forth and so on, you see. And the only thing he said there in regard to your anointing is he must be apt to teach. That's all he said there in regard to your anointing. Other than that, he dealt in 1 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 7 with the character of the minister. Why? Because it's not the gifts. Oh, I wish we can get this. It's not the gifts that show your level of spirituality. It's your character. It's not the gifts that show your level of walking with the Lord. It's your character. Whether or not you're walking in the fruit of the Spirit, all right? As listed in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. You want to grow in God? Practice those things. Practice love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. And get your definitions for those um, various uh, uh, fruit from the Word of God. Now, this is what he does here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. Look at that in verses 4 through 8. Notice he gives us what the love of, how the love of God behaves. This is the character, characteristics, or descriptions of godly love. Love suffereth long and is kind. Well, a lot of people may suffer long, but they don't be kind with it. But love suffers long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love wanted or boasted not of itself. Love is not puffed up or full of pride. Love does not behave itself unseemly. There are people who are very, very rude and then wants to say that they, they're in the spirit. Oh my God. Love is not rude. I said love is not rude. Love may be firm, but love is not rude. All right? Love is not unmannerly. Uh, um, and we're going to read it out that in a minute. Love seeketh not our own. It's not, well, that knocks out a lot of people again. Because a lot of people, that's what they're doing, trying to get their reputation, trying to get people to think that they're more spiritual than the pastor, they're more spiritual than the leaders in the church, they're more spiritual than everybody else. Well, love is not, does not seek our own. Love is not about self, you see? Love, um... It's not easily provoked. Love thinketh no evil. Love rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and love never fails. Once more, out of the Amplified Bible. And I love the Amplified Bible. I, I just amplifies it, you know? And so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, here's how the Amplified Bible says the very same thing. But I love this. And I'll tell you something. Take 30 days, the next 30 days, and read this every day out of the Amplified Bible and confess it over yourself. And watch what happens and what happens in your life. You, 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 you begin to try to say some things at some people or to some people that are not in love. And these scriptures will come back and say, don't say it. Don't say it. You, you will be talking to your spouse and want to get at your spouse, and these scriptures will come back and say, don't do it, don't do it. Hallelujah. You, you, you will be wanting to mind your own business, and these scriptures will come back, and God will lead you through his word. Do you know that's how he, number one, leads us? Number one way God leads every child of God is through his word. We try to find guidance all other kinds of ways instead of getting to know God in his word. That's where we miss it, and that's where people get off into error. And so forth. Learn God through His Word, and then the Holy Spirit will lead you uh, uh, um, in other ways, visions and dreams and so forth. Whatever. But first, learn God through His Word. All right, that is number one way. And then notice here in First Corinthians now, thirteen four through eight again. This Amplified Bible: Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. See, we, when we walk in love, that'll take all the competition out of the church. We'll stop competing against one another. 
You see? Stop trying to say we out preaching one another, out teaching one another, out singing one another. You know, oh, we got the best choir. You know, that that's the that's the sign of a spiritual child. That's a child of a spiritual baby when you start talking like that. You see? Love don't do that. Love, love never looks at, I'm trying to show we better than the other person. Love aims to just aim to help people and please the Lord. That's, that's love. All right? Then he says, love is not boastful or being glorious. Love does not display itself haughtily. See, love ain't rude. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. Love is not touchy, well, great God. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Love is full of forgiveness and full of compassion. Love is full of forgiveness. Remember this now. I know I'm not reading now. I'm telling you because it's not touchy, fretful, or resentful. It is full of forgiveness and full of compassion. It forgives uh, um, a person's wrong the minute the person does wrong. It ain't that the person didn't do wrong. Love just forgives them and love prays the prayers like Jesus prayed when he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I know what you're going to say. I'm not Jesus. All right. Okay. Well, um, if you can't take it from Jesus, what about from Stephen? Who when they were stoning him, Stephen prayed and said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. See, that's the love, that's a person of love. We read that Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And so people said, Oh, that's what I want to be. I'll be full of the faith and Holy Ghost, I could do great signs and wonders. But he his faith worked because he apparently he was a man full of the love of God. How? Because when they were stoning him, he didn't say, God rain fire down from heaven and burn them up. He said, Father, lay not this sin. To their charge that's the prayer of a person walking in the love of god because he prayed the same prayer that the lord jesus paid prayed when he was on the cross when he was praying for those that caused him to be there father lay not this sin to their charge you see so uh, um um that's how love operates. It's not touchy. It's not fretful. It's not resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It forgives people and it doesn't bring the issues back up again. And it aims to treat people like they want to be treated. That's a loving person. Treat people like you want to be treated. Practice that. You're not going to be perfect with it all at once, but just practice these characteristics of real love. Okay? Practice them until they become a part of you. Uh, really, they already are because the love of God, if you're born again, is in your heart. You see, you're just practicing walking it out. You see, you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're not working for your salvation because salvation is not a works. You're working out your salvation because your salvation is on the inside. The love of God in you is on the inside. Now, because salvation is in, you have to wake it out. You have to walk in love. You have to practice love. You have to practice walking by faith. You have to practice walking in self-control. You have to practice these things from within because they're within you. Now you have to practice them by bringing your body under subjection, bringing your thinking in line with God's word, and letting your system line up with the will the plan and the purpose of God. I, I pray that you understood that because that's a mouthful. If you can just go back over this teaching uh, um, uh, um, and, and make note of what I just said, because see, um, these things are in your spirit. They're in your inner, inward man. Now you have to let the love of God flow into your thinking and start to think better about people. And then you have to let the love of God flow to the place where you line your flesh up and say, okay, we're gonna practice walking in love. Now, I, I tell you this too. Um, there are people who I believe have a very distorted view of love. And this is what I was talking about earlier um, in another session where I said people tend to think love is feeling, but it's not. Uh, um, sometimes you may feel that love, but love is not a feeling. Then there are people who may tend to think love is sex. Love is not sex. All right. Uh, um, sex is an expression of love in a godly marriage. All right. But outside of marriage, it's not love. Outside of marriage, it's loss. All right. In marriage, it, it's supposed to be an expression of love. All right. For two who are married to come together as one. But outside of marriage, that's not love. So when people say, you know, they committed adultery and they still want to tell their spouse, oh, but I love you. No, that's not true. 
you said well, you made a mistake. Yeah, but that act that you did was not the love. It was not the love of God. The love of God don't commit adultery. The love of God don't commit fornication. The love of God doesn't lie. The love of God doesn't steal. The love of God doesn't cheat. Uh oh the love of God is full of self-control. As a matter of fact, you know in the book of Galatians, and I'll just throw this out for you to think about um, as we get ready to close here. But you know in Galatians when it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, um, temperance, um, faithfulness, temperance. Uh, um, um, there are nine different uh, um, parts of the fruit of the Spirit. Um, look at that again. It didn't say the fruits of the Spirit. It's a fruit. There's one fruit. Now, what is the fruit? The fruit is love. Out of love comes joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, good, goodness, faithfulness, and meekness, uh, and temperance, which is self-control, you see? Out of the fruit of love, those things come. If I love you, I'm not going to steal from you. If I love you, I'm going to control myself and not run around on you. If I love you, I'm going to treat you like I want to be treated. Um, so I'm going to exercise meekness and kindness. If I love you, I'm going to be faithful and loyal. All of those things are love. Not just in marriage now. I'm talking about uh, I'm just as a matter of character of life. Uh, um, love is faithful. Love is peaceful. Love doesn't like strife. Love aims to walk as a peacemaker, you see? Love is uh, um, full of joy. Hallelujah. Love gets a kick out of doing things for people and, and not having to get no recognition about it. Love gets a kick out of that. Just doing things to help people. Just doing things to bless people. Just doing things to help people uh, and minister to people, you see? Love gets a kick out of that. Love operates in all of the fruit of the Spirit, you see? So if I aim at developing in the love of God, then all of those other areas of the fruit of the Spirit will show up in my life. Well, what is really the two great commandments given? The two great commandments is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself you see but Paul said Romans chapter 13 read it again beginning there I believe it's around the seventh verse but it's in Romans 13 Paul said well uh, um, if you walk in love it's verses 9 from verse 9 he said the one who um, aims to walk in that love he said you're not gonna break the law he said all the law is fulfilled namely in this thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself so you're not gonna break the laws that God has given to curb sin if you walk in the love of God you see so you have to develop it well how is how does love behave right here we read them right here the characteristics love suffered long and is kind or love endures long and is patient and kind love never is envious never boils over with jealousy is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself does, um, haughtily. Love is not uh, um, conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude and mannerly. It does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Um, it is not self seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice in a, at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoice when right and true prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready to believe the best of every person, not the worst of them, the best of them. Its hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Glory to God. That's spiritual maturity. Oh, that's spiritual maturity. If there's one thing the body of Christ really needs to develop in, it's walking in the love of God. Walking and treating people like we want to be treated. Walking and treating people like Jesus treated us. Hallelujah. Walking in forgiveness. People are so bitter these days, full of bitterness. You, you hear it when they talk. People are full of bitterness and full of strife and full of quarrels and love being contentious. Um, they don't know what it is to be a person of peace and a person for peace, a peacemaker, someone who really care for people and who really is doing their best to reach out to people and just, you know, to help them to know Jesus more and to help them to know Jesus better. There's so many people in need of the real, pure, genuine compassion and love of God today. They really need people to show them that God is real. And Jesus said, they will know we're his disciples by our love. 
You know, many people don't believe that. They think they know we as disciples when we operate in power and when we could call fire out and call judgment down on people. No, he said they'll know we're his people by our love, our character. That speaks volumes to people. How you treat people speaks volumes to people, all right? And so we have to practice walking in love. Now, um, we're not going to go into all of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse by verse because really the essence of what is in chapter 14 is summed up really in the last verse of chapter 14. And this is the uh, um, really the um, climax of what the apostle had to say in regard to the manifestations of the Holy Ghost in operation in a local assembly or in a church. He said, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. That was the problem in the Corinthian church. The problem was that they didn't have order. That was the problem. And they didn't have order because they were self-seeking. They didn't have order because people wanted to, to, to be seen. They didn't have order because uh, um, while this one is trying to preach, this one want to go prophesy, that one want to go give a message in tongues, this one want to go do this. And so and it was out of order because people were not walking in love, you see. And you, you need to understand that even in a local church. And I've, I've watched people um, come into our local assembly and you will tell them to just bring greetings. And the next thing you know, they want to prophesy to everybody. You didn't tell them to do that. You didn't even give them permission to do that they never even ask your permission they just go on and start to do their own thing and they thought it was spiritual and they thought it was deep and you know your people thinking sometimes oh great god that's the doing and oh blah 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 and they don't know a whole lot of times some of these people are out of order because they didn't they didn't come to they weren't asked to do it and they didn't get authority from God's lead man or God's lead woman to go ahead and, and, and do what the Holy Ghost say. You know, some people just come and try to take all your service. You done finish preaching. The message is all. You come to ask them to, to, to just bring greetings because you're trying to be respectful. And then they want to take over and start a whole other service. And let me tell you something, child of God. A, a pastor, after years of experience and after uh, I'm learning the ways of the Spirit and learning divine order, past, some pastors will tell you, listen, um... Um, we've already had the message for the day and the Lord's already ministered to the people and you know uh, um, maybe uh, um, uh, um, you may be thinking oh um, um, I'm anointed to do this and so forth but uh, um, that I can sense in my own heart and my own spirit the service is over um, it's time to go home you see uh, and um, you know sometimes you don't want to do that because you're not trying to hurt people's feelings but you're trying to get people to learn how to operate in order and if you feel like you have a message for, for the church, don't go take over people's church and just try to talk about, I got a message for this church, blah, 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 blah. Talk to the pastor first. Be a person of order. Talk to the pastor and say, Pastor, this is what I sense the Lord saying to me. Um, do I have your permission to give this or what? And the pastor could let you know, you know. But we need to learn how to operate in divine order. And if there was ever time we needed to learn divine order, it is now. And um, if you are under true apostolic authority, apostles understand order. That's one thing about a real apostle. Real apostles understand divine order. And they'll set things in order. They're anywhere. And they have the authority to do it because the church is under their care. You get out order, they'll set things in order. Because that's the anointing upon an apostle. And you may get mad at them and all oh, they stopping the flow of the Spirit. But being in order doesn't stop the flow of the Spirit. Being in order makes the flow of the Spirit even that more powerful for the simple reason that everything is being done um, in accordance with God's set order. You see? And so uh, um, I think there's a whole lot to be said here, a whole lot that we can learn in regard to divine order. I'm going to do, uh, uh, um, next week, I'm going to aim to just give some highlights from chapter 14 concerning where Paul was aiming at making sure the order was set and just show it to you. And then we'll move on into chapter 15 that deals with uh, um, the great resurrection. Glory be to God. And then we'll end that book by going in chapter 16 and saying how the Spirit of God wrapped up everything he was trying to say through the Apostle Paul to this local assembly. I pray that you join us at that time. So until that time, we love you and God loves you and Jesus is Lord. So glad that you joined us for this time in God's Word today.
And we want you, please, to go ahead, if you want to see other videos coming to you from Jesus Christ Center Ministries International, subscribe to this particular page. Like us on Facebook at Jesus CCMI. And by the way, if you have prayer requests, please email us. Our email address will be on the screen in just a moment. Email us and let us know how we can pray for you. Until we meet together again around God's word, remember, Jesus Christ is Lord and divine love flows.